a little bit about uh, what so what does all this do? What is going to be the building block for the kind of bank that, for example, we are talking about? And I'm quite sure that my peers, which are another uh, now nine uh, payments banks and um, uh, ten small finance banks, and they, I'm sure they're all sitting and having similar thoughts about when they think about their customers, they cannot help thinking also about technology because what does technology do is essentially identify, access, secure, and proliferate, right? That's what technology helps you to do. And therefore, you really cannot avoid thinking about it in creative ways, even though you may be uh, scared. And, and then, then you say, OK, so let's see how can we uh, you know, tame this uh, beast to make it useful for us. And the way we think about it is, of course, there's this uh, two people uh, sitting on my left and my right, and that's why I chose to stand and talk because I was feeling like I'm, you know, like too much power around me. <laughs> so there's there's this whole wind in the sails of financial services because the basic requirement of uh, a digital stack, uh, so to say, a, a more open architecture system than we have ever seen and a fairly innovative and smart and uh, proactive uh, infrastructure, payments infrastructure company are around to you know, navigate through the basics. But the great thing is that if I were to do this business 10 years ago, I would have to start thinking from the base and say, which is a little bit like the Alipay, Alibaba story, where you actually, as a private participant, come into an ecosystem which is excluded, and you're able to really build all the entire thing. So there's an upside to that, but there's also a downside to that, because you have to do all this. Now, in India, it's obviously going to be different, because there are multiple participants. There's base level infrastructure that we are all going to use. Uh, and, and incidentally, in China, it was uh, various people, but uh, the, the advantage was that the, this, the, they, they had to start from scratch. So, so what does identity do? I think we heard a lot about identity. And what identity does is uh, to allow you to come inside. You know, it's, it, at the end of the day, we very, human beings are very clubby. So at the, at the elite, in an elite way, we want, to rest, we want to restrict access. And so therefore, the more people that can identify with each other, the higher the access that gets created. The higher the access that gets created, you, stop, you become less clubby, right? Because now there is everybody who can come in. When, a long time ago, when I used to be in the central bank, I used to be, uh, I, I went to the US to study, and then I came back, and one of the new things that was happening at RBI at the time was they would uh, send people to do mystery shopping in banks, and I don't know if uh, there are bankers here or any people who have their stories. But my story was very interesting because uh, I had just come back from the US, and um, I was told to go to a bank in some uh, posh Delhi uh, neighborhood to see what was the level of customer service and how the branch functioned, etc. So I go there and I sit there, and uh, just about everybody who's anybody in the branch walks up and says, "What can we do for you, ma'am? Will you have water? Will you have breakfast? Should we open your account?" And I came back and I said, "You know, I'm not the right person to send to do this job because everybody assumes I'm, I'm rich, I have money, and therefore they give me the best customer service that's possible." But that's because you walk in with a certain type of attire and a certain type of uh, you speak a certain kind of English. Now the beauty of uh, of the technology uh, that we are now going to use is that on your mobile phone, it really doesn't matter what you were wearing, how you walked in, what the issue is for. What matters is that you have a need and you want to fulfill that need and therefore you're coming on that platform. And I say this to most of my friends that as far as I'm concerned, your driver is a more valuable customer to me than you are because you're so useless, you're going to throw money at solving every problem, whereas he doesn't have a choice and therefore he's most likely going to learn how to use a mobile to solve his problem by himself. And, and therefore, I think the whole definition changes and that is one of the things that's very important for us and we are definitely going to use that. With access comes risk because now you have allowed everybody to come in, which means that you have very little control over who's coming because uh, while Ahar has done a great job, obviously Ahar's job is to say, I am shooting you. It doesn't say whether I, you know, whether I get drunk at night and fall into the gutter or I kill people or whatever. It just said I am who I am. And therefore, now access is created, platform is paid, everybody's in, but now I need to make sure uh, that it's secure, that people are not doing bad things, that people are doing good things, that they're doing things that they're supposed to. 
that they're not uh, hurting the interest of uh, other people. So security is going to become a far, far bigger challenge than we have ever thought about. And uh, therefore, because today, I mean, my bank's net banking, I open it, and God forbid if I sneeze, I'm logged out. And if I call them and say, what is going on, they say, you know, this is for your security. I had to transfer five lakh rupees to my father, and it was his money, and, what, and unfortunately, it was, he just needed it for some little purpose. It took me three days to transfer that money, because you add a person, then, then that person has to be given, then there are limits and all kinds of things. So it's just very, very, in the name of security, we have an education system. We need to walk that tightrope between increasing security, reducing hassle, and therefore we must be really strong as well as technology is concerned. That's what's going to happen. And of course, the, the, then comes the nice part, the creative part. To create as many use cases as possible. Every morning when I leave my house, and between the time that I leave and I come back, I find like hundreds and thousands of use cases of ATM and people just keep talking about it all the time, and my whole team does it all the time, and that's what it is so exciting about. Um, the, to close, what, what do I get to hear a lot is, uh, what are the challenges, right? Why will we not be able to do it? And the issue cited to me are, People are illiterate, and I and my view is that, as I said, I've been poor, I've been I've had money. I think rich people throw money to solve problems. Poor people throw their brains. They're smarter. They know what they do, what is in their interest. We don't worry about that. Uh, so I don't think poor are scared of technology because, in my experience, I have found that any mate who has come into my house has learned to use the washing machine, microwave, uh, toaster, everything. Whereas my husband has never learned, and I only learned it by shoe. So I think the poor learn technology faster because it solves problems for them, and I think we will uh, count a lot on that uh, fact. Uh, th then we are told that uh, uh, poor have, uh, yeah, fear of risk. That's that's something that everybody in this room will be familiar with because in the microfinance industry, that's something that that our, our entire policy making is obsessed with the idea of protecting the poor from risk. And I'm saying, you know, the guy gets up in the morning, he doesn't even know whether he'll come back at night. His life, he lives with risk. Stop overprotecting him because, in the name of protecting him, we create barriers for him to actually move forward. So I think we will uh, need to think about that and you know see how we can help this communication. What's important for us? Good communication, clear goals, ability to connect with communities, and and I think the way we think we will be able to do it is through a lot and lot of partnership with various people because I think there are already enough people in the system who understand that uh, space who have very good um, you know sort of interest in optimizing the the efficiency of the payment transmission that's all that we think we will add to the system and there are a lot of people who will gain from it governments will gain from it private parties will gain from it corporations will gain from it uh, the, the mfi and the industry will gain from it i think we, we have very good reason to believe and be hopeful that with good technology with good identity with good partners we should not uh, and, and with very good uh, you know, sort of uh, attitude that we think the people in this country have to improve their livelihood and to improve their access, we should be able to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Anjali. We can now throw it open uh, for questions. So this is for you, Dilip. Uh, I'm just curious to, you know, understand the history of NPCI a little bit. Uh, for some of us who have not been that closely involved in the sector all through, and yes, you know, are starting to look at it a little more closely now. Mm. I'm starting to realize the scale and scope of NPCI yeah. and the success that NPCI has had, putting through a billion transactions in a month, as you say. Uh, just it will be interesting to understand how what makes NPCI so successful and you know, how it's got to where it is today. Uh, the second one is for Shinjini, which is a little more specific. Uh, as you look at the mobile wallet business, uh, you know, I, I'm curious to hear your views on the agent assist more agent assisted model using the uh, self. So, so I think this, can we can we turn this off? Uh, you know, the coffee break because I think we take a lot of time to explain the NPCI. There are many good things, bad things. Uh, so I don't mind telling bad things also, right? Is that okay? Can we talk? Yeah, sure. Uh, my answer should be uh, short. Um, I think uh, I don't dismiss the utility of the assisted uh, model. I do believe that people will need help to migrate. And it's not, the, the only thing I dispute is that it's not just the poor and illiterate that I'm always told will need assistance. I think it's a lot of really, uh, you know, people like us who uh, will need assistance to migrate the system. Uh, 
uh, to, to doing self-assisted because, you know, we are so, I met this uh, lady in uh, Delhi and she said, I don't know why you people don't think we are your customer. She was a rich woman. But she said, you know, my husband passed away, my children live in America. Every time I see a PTM ad, I think I wish I could pay my bill on my mobile, but I don't know how to do it. Okay. So the assisted model really has a utility for different segments of clients. But of course, we are a young country. We are a country where smartphones are proliferating. That is the trend that will grow. As a, first, as, a, as a philosophy, we like to be a little futuristic and we like to drive to the future rather than uh, you know, be bogged down by problems of today. So that's the approach that we will take, but we definitely think that the system model will have some utility. So thank you all for being here. I think this was a, a dream panel to have uh, today because to get all a practitioner, the policy maker and NPCI all in the same place uh, quite a, answers most of the questions we've always been grappling with. So thanks so much. Appreciate it.